A Piece of the Woods is brought to you by Tenonizer Technology, leader in equipment manufacturing and technology for the whole lock industry. And from Minnesota, for online supplies and information from log projects to fishing. Great Woods Cabinetry, a full-service custom cabinet maker, online to on-site. Welcome back to our continuation of Log Circle Stairway. Last time, using technology, we built our center pole and stair treads and got it all fitted together. Using the same technology, we're going to go through and make the handrail for our circle stairway. We'll show you as many tricks and tips as we can along the way, so get your notepad out and pencil and enjoy another episode of A Piece of the Woods. Okay, we've repositioned our pattern on top here and we're at stair tread number 10. The plumb line will mark the center of our stair tread. So we get a mark exactly center. And we'll bring the framing square up so we can Go off of that center mark, we'll position at three on the framing square and mark at six and over at zero. And that'll give us from center to center on our spindles on top of the stair tread, that'll give six inches center to center. Now, see what we've got here on our drill? We've got a little bubble level that's set on our piece of steel here. Now we can do this because on the Milwaukee drills they've got this machined collar that they have on a lot of their drills and fixtures here where that just clamps right on here. We've got a couple bolts in the clamp here. Anyhow, that clamps on there good and solid so we can drill our hole perfectly plumb straight up and down. We'll get this next one here. tenon length is three and a half inches. Oh, you gotta smell this here. This is eastern red cedar. Ah. I told you that smells good. Anyhow, our tenon length is three and a half inches. So we drilled our hole just over three and a half. It's about three and three quarters deep. And that'll give plenty of room on the bottom side there. And uh, we'll finish drilling this and then install the rest of our, install our spindles. We've got two different lengths of spindles that we're cutting. One 45 inches, next one 48 and 3 16 Because of the angle that we've got of 27 degrees at the spindle position, it gives us a difference, six inches on center, a difference in length of three and 3 16 per spindle. Okay. What's, what you really need to get, so what we're working with, we want to glue these square shoulder tenons in. Now this cut can be made on any of tenonizers, tenon cutters, it'll work on any one of the machines. But this cut, we're cutting to match the whole size that we're drilling. And when you're working with the different sizes, or working with different cuts, make sure you do a test hole. Here we've got the, uh, the drill bit that we're going to be using, we're going to glue the parts in place. So we've drilled a test hole here and match it up with the part that we're putting in there. Now, this bit's drilled just slightly oversized, so we match the tenon size up to it and cut the same cut on each, on each spindle. So 
that were three and a half inches, three and a half inches long, and were two inches and one hundred and thirty thousand. So I had to go slightly oversized to match the hole that we're drilling. Well, what we've done to make our cut on the top of our spindles to receive our laminated handrail is we've gone over to the radial arm saw, set our part up using center line design, made all the notching with the radial arm saw to bring this last cut here to 27 degrees. We've set a stop at the end so that each cut is the same length. Then we've gone back over here to our sanding station. We've sanded the knots on the air drum. Then we take the whole part across the bristle sander and get it so it's all perfectly nice and smooth like this so it's ready to install. I know I'm packing a lot in, but we got a lot to do yet. And we're counting on the glue and the good precise fit to make our structural joint here. This is gonna be carrying some weight here, tying all our stair treads together. So we wanna make sure we get a good glue joint, precise, solid, immovable, and all of that stuff. See how that fits so nice down at the bottom there? Look at that. All the way down here. See how nice and tight that fits? Yeah, I mean it. Look, here, right here. It fits perfect. Of course, it's just like the rest of them here, but you're seeing that one. Now we've got to get this turned so that our flat spot that we've machined on here for our handrail is pointing position just right to the center of the stairway. Yes, right there. That'll be very good. And we'll just keep gluing the rest of them in. There's only, what, 28, I think. All right, this is what was talking about with the angle of the stairway here. Right here, on the very outside of the stair tread, we've got 26 degrees as far as the angle. Now, where the spindles are, we've got 27 degrees. And if we come into the walking path on the stairway, right where you're going to be putting your feet on the walking path, we've got some 35 degrees. See that right there? Okay, we're at 34 and a half, 35 degrees in the walking path. But now, where people run into trouble is when they make the stairway steeper, uh, steeper being they make it, um, Hmm, well, what do we have here? If we pull in further, where a lot of stairways are built, these circle stairways, we've got close to 45 degrees in the walking path. That's way, way too steep. That's where kids fall down the steps and people get hurt. But if you keep, here, see this? As we go out further and make the walking path, the angle of the walking path a shallower angle, it's a much safer, much more comfortable, full-time use stairway. And we're all the way out. 27 degrees in the walking path. That's, or 37, excuse me. That's perfect. 35, 36 degrees, that's perfect. Can you hand me that square that's right next to you? James, right down there. We're layer number five on our handrail here. We're going six layers thick. Give us a total of an inch and a half thick once the rail is done. Now you notice we're using precise measurements when we consider the volume of glue that we're using. We are gluing both surfaces though. Both sides of each piece does get glued.
This is layer number six. One gallon and a quart later, and we have just enough glue. Now we'll start taping it up into a nice little bundle. Black tape, tape it up tight, all together. Okay. Okay, come on over here. Now you got to take a look at what we did here. This piece that we have on the top here, this, this is the outside of our handrail. And if you see right here, can you see the shiny tape that's on here? We have tape that's joined right here at the seam and it stretches out about three feet in each direction, taped real good so that when, when we wrap this up around the stairway, this joint is going to want to pull apart, but the tape is going to hold it together and it'll force the rest of the joints together as it's wrapped around the stairway. And then we have this black pipe here. See the black pipe full of holes? This is going to be on the bottom of our rail and we'll tape that around the bundle now or to the bottom of the bundle. And as it goes uh, in place, the black pipe is going to give a place for all the extra glue to drain out. See, we're going to wrap it in paper. After we wrap the, it'll all be one bundle. You'll see as we go along. If you wrap the whole thing as one entire bundle without wrapping the the handrail first is a bundle before you put the black pipe on. Then the sides of the, the outside layers, they slide, they slide down around the pipe and they just kind of slide down around there and you, they get, you get a deformed handrail. It's still, it's still functional, it'll still do what it's supposed to, but you got to work with the, the limitation of the rail then. He's got a knife. Yeah, cut it and then we'll wrap it and then put just a little bit of tape on it and wrap it again. And All right, now I think that we should put just a little bit of tape on it, you know, like every three feet or something, and wrap it again. Just All right, can you hold things steady for just a moment without moving? Justin, can you let go? You got it? Yeah. Justin, grab that box of screws. Give me the box of screws. That's fine, okay. Now, as you can see, it takes a lot of clamps. See how close these clamps are? I mean, we got one every three inches. Now, the reason for all these clamps is if you don't have lots of clamps, and you'll get bulges. <laughs> bulges, you know, you don't want any, any of that. So a lot of clamps keeps everything nice and tight. Now, you look at the paper and you go, why paper? Well, if we have plastic wrapped around it, it's not going to breathe. But we have to have something around here to catch all of the glue drips. Otherwise, there's glue running all over the stairway, all over the floor, and that's just not acceptable. So we got to wrap it with something. The paper works really good because it dries through it. It dries fairly fast. Now, we're going to give it seven days to dry. 
And he said, seven days, that's a long time. Well, if we take the clamps off too soon and take this out of here, the whole rail goes bong and comes apart. That's really bad too. So we don't want that to happen. We're gonna give it seven days. Uh, as you see, we got a lot of clamps to come off, but uh, it's dried down really good. We'll just start dismantling the whole thing. Well, we're going to rip it all apart, the cover, you know, and then we'll start sanding it down. Kind of looks like Christmas morning, you know. What do you get? A block of wood. As you can see, we got a lot of planning to do, and this will get it pretty close, and then we'll maybe be able to finish it up just by hand. But it'll take us a little while. Now we have had to go back and we scribe these, the bottom part of our spindle, to the rail. And then we're just using this block and a spacer to trim the tops off so they're all exactly the same. Okay, just hold on, slow down. All right. All right, you're going to set the position from where you are on the bottom. There we are. Are we back in, in place now from where we scribed it? Up. There. Okay. Wow, look at how nice that fits. Beautiful. Now, when we were, when we sanded the rail down, well, we used the planer, you know, <coughs> but then we used this, uh, Body shop polisher turns slower with this air drum on here. <coughs> now this is, this drum is, is cushy, it's filled with air. So we can sand what we did. We sanded the rail with the air drum, but it makes it look like you spent hundreds of hours by hand when really only it took just a few minutes with the air drum. That's fast. Well now we can fasten it all in place and they can put a finish on it, and here we have another piece of the woods. Well, there it is. I hope we were successful in showing you how to build a log circle stairway. You might have to get the tape and watch it a few times. There's a lot there. If you got more questions, if you just want to read about it, go to pieceofthewoods.com. Until next time, go out and find your treasure, find your own. Piece of the Woods is brought to you by Tenonizer Technology, leader in equipment manufacturing and technology from Wolock Industry and from Minnesota for online supplies and information from log projects to fishing.
Great Woods Cabinetry, a full-service custom cabinet make online to on-site. For a copy of this show or for more information or questions, go to www.apieceofthewoods.com.